Mm-hmm. And one one of the things taught there is, well, what truly is good? Does good is mm-hmm. is good based on you having the power to define it? Because they were big on like you know society, American society, white supremacy, things like that. But one of the things they would talk about is. So if I have all the power and I make the rules, but the rules favor my negativity, does that make it good, though it's legal? Interesting. Right? Yeah. yeah. And so there, there has always been that idea in my mind yeah. growing up. And I'll be honest, if there wasn't um, like a scripture yeah. to level the playing field, I think you could philosophically justify anything because all men are imperfect. Hmm even in the thing that they claim to hold true to. So you see, like, take for take for instance, um, you take drug dealers in Detroit, you take the drug cartel, and then you take Wall Street. Yeah. Right? Now, if you take a guy named Cornell West, he r- rails against Wall Street, and a lot of guys do. Just saying those are some of the biggest gangsters, but there are um, laws and loopholes that protect their gangsterization. Yeah. And that's why you see a lot of guys in the hood who are educated, who they're, they, they're comfortable with like, nah, I'll sell drugs or, yeah, I'm going mm-hmm. to be a drug cartel runner because I'm just doing what they do. The laws just don't back me. Yeah. But m- morally, they're morally unequal, hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or equally immoral across mm-hmm. the board. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah. yeah. It so, seems like it plays out. Does that play out in the Bronx tale? Is that sort of that tension of what the father wants for the son and what the the gangster that he's meeting, uh, you know, is kind of changing his attitude? Yeah. Is that sort of that story? Yeah, it's, and it's a brilliant story because you watch that and you're asking a question. Of course Robert ne- De Niro is good. He's good. He's faithful. He's not going to mess up. He's a hard worker. But then you look at a Sonny and – Outside of the the like one of the opening scenes where he's beating the guy up, you're saying, well, he he's doing what he needs to do to make it happen as well. Yeah, you know. Um, now, do you want a life where you fear <laughs> for yeah. your life and you can't trust anybody? And that's where it comes to a head, right? Or Cahorgelo is just like, you, I th- you know, I thought we were close. You can't even trust me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Where yeah. you thought he put the bomb in, you know, in the car and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And so that that that's kind of the the path when you lead a life like that. But I think it's brilliant because it makes you ask the question: Okay, laws aside, are are we all imperfect? Yes. Okay. So what then declares, according to man's rules, yeah, what's moral and immoral? Mm-hmm. Then you have to have a higher st- standard that supersedes both. So. I guess what would your suggestion be in relationship to, like, for instance, <clears throat> let's take Inside Man yep. as a great example. And mm-hmm. this is kind of a spoiler alert for those who don't know it. But Clive Owens ends up being, throughout the movie, you think that he's going to rob this bank and yep. everything like that. And it turns out that he's taken down a, a higher, you know, systematic problem that's yep. going on, right? Yep. So morally, we've changed this perceived criminal. Yeah into by the end of the movie almost a hero yeah. and because there's a larger system that needs to be broken yeah. right yeah. um we look at malcolm x malcolm x is a character that you know here living in atlanta most of my life of course king was much more revered as mm-hmm. the law-abiding one and i know from an african-american standpoint i can't step into that experience to know <clears throat> how complicated it must be to kind of reconcile a malcolm x with a, a king yeah. Um, But I'm assuming it's the same conversation that we're talking about of a perceived criminal-esque aspect to it um, versus the MLK who's doing things by the book, and yet which one's good, you know, um, and and what good comes out of it. And it's the same systematic power that's being taken down um, and being uh, erased. So laws aside, like you said, where do you, you ultimately look at a person and be able to go, how do we as a society judge what is good, what yeah. is not good? So for me personally, I, I think you do have to have a standard. For myself, it, you know, it's definitely the scriptures. Um, even if I'm talking to a person, I, I quote Malcolm, Malcolm, I'm about to say Malcolm King, uh, Martin Luther <laughs> King, where he goes, um, a guy responded to him when Martin Luther King were doing a protest about, you know, segregation and things like that. And the guy says, but Mr. King, it's legal. And he goes, when the laws of the land 
um, justify or legalize evil, then we must result to a moral obligation hmm. to stand against those unjust laws. That's good. And so I, I'll go, I always go back to what is our moral obligation? Hmm. And I think our moral obligation that we miss in America is to be our brother's keeper. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, neighborhood. Yeah, neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's to be our brother's keeper, um, which, you know, it's, if you look at the Hebraic Foundation, they were, they, they're they the biggest on neighborhoods. Yeah. I mean, if you go to the East Now, I remember when I went to Palestine, you're talking about homes that are built upward so you can see four generations mm. each time you go up. The, another floor. Wow. So you're talking about true neighborhoods. So they got neighborhood going upward on the floors, <laughs> and then they have neighborhoods in the actual space yeah. in which they indwell. Wow. Right? So this is just a Hebraic uh, mentality of brothers keepers. So then you have Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. And Cain sarcastically said it back to God, where he says, where's your brother? Goes, Am I my brother's keeper? Right. And God, you know, rhetorically, he didn't say yes, but he was saying yes. He goes, yes. Like, yeah. Duh. You are, <laughs> yeah. right? So I would say at the end of the day, you define it by being your brother's keeper. So going to Inside Man, that's one of the things, you know, you, you can talk and draw conclusions. But I think Clive Owen's character, along with the partnership of this, you know, this, this figure that quote-unquote hired him, however you want to look at it, he was being his brother's keeper yeah, and saying, no, nah, this guy is trying to absolve himself of how his – business started from a heinous evil by doing good mm -hmm. and he is yet to admit that he took advantage of a opportunity interesting that wasn't being his brother's keeper he made a lot of money off of it huh. now he's trying to pay a life of penance that's good that's yeah. good what would you say is kind of the forces that you see threaded through some of your movies as um as bad guys that's a good question I think it shows a consistent complexity mm -hmm. that uh, immorality tends to be at the highest level where morality should be 100% in existence. Interesting, yeah. And that is the problem with humanity in trying to, uh, you know, rid the world of, put in the blank, or flesh out. Or see this common good be it come to existence, because you know you you take let's say my wife just recently went to Thailand to work with an anti uh, sex trafficking agency. What's tough and what's true, Solomon says this is that corruption most times is at the highest level, and so to rid society of this evil you're having to go against unknowingly knowingly mm -hmm. the highest level that that is supposed to be a picture of morality Interesting. because they're getting kickbacks they're the perceived criminals <laughs> you're again, right you see are, what i'm saying yeah exactly the good guys are the bad guys the bad guys are maybe even your heroes at the end of the <laughs> right, day right right and that's mm. one so that's the moral what makes complexity it is yes. is really kind of the antagonist in all this exactly. is that you got to navigate you know, those different worlds of is is the good guy really the good guy? Is right. the bad guy really the bad yeah. guy? And what's just and right? Because a lot of things, when I looked at your films, I was like, you could say all of his films are, are a little bit shaded towards justice, but it, there seems to be something a little bit more than that. Like it's it's a desire for the world to be right, yeah. you know? Yeah. A desire, and when you've explained it like that as far as morality yeah. at its highest level, and like you said, something a system that you want to be moral, but you got to take it down because it's immoral. <laughs> and sometimes you got to be immoral to take down the moral, <laughs> the perceived moral world. Mm -hmm. That describes Malcolm X. That describes mm -hmm. a lot of uh, of this. Um, tell me about this issue of race for you. We've been talking about the moral complexity and moral complexity of systems and who's good and who's bad. And we are in a society right now where. The whole issue, like Black Lives Matter and everything, like we were at a conference, and the thing that hit me the strongest it plays into what we were talking, what we've been talking about, is a gal said that, you know, would we think that even if they were criminals, you mm -hmm. know, the, the the Trayvon Martins or, or somebody like that, that if we contextualize them that they had done something wrong, mm -hmm. even though they may not have, but even if they had, it still doesn't sh take away their humanity, yep. and I think for. A person like me who's grown up 
primarily in white circles that there's an easy checkbox I can check off to go, no, but he's a criminal, you know, right. and not see him as a human being, not, okay. not seeing the humanity. And so I just feel like that this issue of race is so huge right now. And I'd love for you to take some time just to educate us as to what you've seen, what you've looked at in this picture, because the picture of your top 10 speaks to a very big passion dealing with race yeah. and dealing with blacks and whites. So tell me about that. Tell tell me what your perspective is on all this. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty big question. but Yeah, so I, I would say foundationally, I tend to say people can be dishonest on the American historical story in its foundation and how it has set up the discrepancies of the present. So when we talk about a lot of these things, take a guy like Malcolm X, he just wanted people to, to acknowledge the foundation of the country didn't include the flourishing of African Americans, Native Americans, and since then, Asian, Hispanic. And for a person to deny that is to be historically dishonest. Mm, I love that. It, it, it really is. Mm-hmm. Like historically and objectively to be dishonest. I mean, if you just go back to the foundation, mm-hmm. right? And then people say, like, okay, well, we'll agree upon that. But then you have to then we have to come to a point of well, how long did that foundation and building upon occur to when people say, Okay, this is wrong, we need to change it. Well, his, historically you could point to nineteen sixty five when, you know, a guy named Greg Moynihan wrote this report and Johnson at the time admitted in reading this report called the Moynihan Report President talking, Johnson. Yeah, President yeah. Johnson agreed that Man, this report is phenomenal. It shows the discrepancies of the black family to the white family. And he says we must own, as an, as America, the 300 years of de- degradation, attack, and oppression against the Negro male and his family. We must answer to this mm-hmm. and put certain things in place to reconcile those 300 years. Mm-hmm. Now, this is the president of the United States. That's huge, right? It's mm-hmm. so huge. That's in 1965. Yeah. So if he's admitting in 1965 we need, we have a 300 year problem. Yeah. Right. So if 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 we attack it from 1965 and say okay we're gonna give it at least 300 years that I mean that's what 2265. Yeah. The thing that I think is so right on that you do is you say let's tell the truth like yeah. that value of truth is held up higher mm-hmm. than. Anything else we're kind of yeah. swimming in, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. So we tend to swim in, well, they did this. What about mm-hmm. this and all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff? And then you kind of just go straight at the, the yeah. heart of going, yeah, but let's just tell the truth here. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so where does our truth lead us yeah. in your mind? The first, I think the Christians need to lead this charge. Mm. And Christians tend to be uh, most notorious in this conversation with um, – a a hard heart to do whatever it takes mm-hmm. for healing to occur. So I always point to Zacchaeus talking to the Christian Zacchaeus, where he says, "You know what? I realize I I defrauded people fourfold, mm. and if healing means I pay, well, actually it was onefold." And he said, "If healing means repaying them fourfold, I'm willing to repay it." Wow. He he just said, "I'm willing to." So yeah. we don't even know if he actually paid it. Did it or not. Yeah. <laughs> and what did Christ say? Huh. Salvation has come to this house. Yeah, Amen. Because yeah. he is willing. Good. So I'm just saying, Christians, are we are we even just willing to? And it's, mm-hmm. and it's always like, it's the, it's the closed hands. And mm-hmm. that mentality is like, well, are you saying we got to? And Christ is saying, if you're asking a question, are you saying we have to? Mm-hmm. You're missing the willing heart. Exactly. And yeah. salvation won't come into your Nice. That's um, really good. So I would say and that. By the way, you just yeah. told a story of a perceived criminal, <laughs> which is a tax collector named Zacchaeus, yeah. who ultimately becomes the center of come good. Come on, man. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> we need to have more people like yourself who are really giving us a historical uh, uh, context to this so that we can we can get the whole picture mm-hmm. so that we have we can respond to the picture as a whole right um because i think for me i either i either live in kind of white guilt right right which right. is just sort of this it's not good it's not good either right <laughs> yeah. or i am trying to do whatever i can but i don't even know what the goal is yeah. i don't even know what, <laughs> so I, what's the end? what am i doing you know like am i <laughs> trying to fire a policeman i don't know what <laughs> right. i'm doing you know and right. so i'm trying to do something right yeah, to help yeah, yeah. 
Um, but I think what helps me so much in our conversations 